Hi, welcome to Grumpy Talks. Anyway, um, I've just put a new clutch in my long wheelbase. And I should have filmed that really, because I put that in, managed to do that without taking the gearbox out. But it's uh, reminded me that occasionally it jumps out of second gear. So, it could be time to bring this project forward and get that gearbox reconditioned. So, let's just show you where it's going to uh, occur. This is where the magic happens. As they say, cleanliness is next to godliness. So, you can tell Satan lives here. Don't worry about the tools, they are for adjusting the brakes. Those two are for shorty, short wheelbase, and that's the long wheelbase. I just feel that it's put a solid bar on a socket and it's so much easier to feel the, the notches as you adjust the brakes up or down. Very rarely down, but as you adjust the brakes you can feel each notch with it being a longer bar and fixed, not like a spanner where you get a bit of movement on it. Um, well, we're on specials. Here's my assistant Ringo. Here we have a 9 16 socket, again on a solid bar. Cut down the socket, weld it to the bar, and that is perfect for taking the prop shafts off. Saves the skin on your knuckles. And um, you just put a spanner on the other end, and that holds the, the end of the bolt solid. So, we'll pick this up when I pull that in and break it down to component parts. Okay, standard series Land Rover gearbox. Engine connected there. Prop shaft connected there and there. Now, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to suck eggs. Um, when I first saw this, uh, when I, 20 odd years ago, when I first started working on these, I thought, oh God, what have I done? It's far too technical. But, you break it down into its component parts and think of it simply. So, here, standard four speed gearbox. At the back, You've got a transfer box. And then here is what converts it from two wheel drive, just on the rear hubs, to four wheel drive. So power comes through here, into here. Think of it simply big cog, little cog. Another little dog in there that converts when you pull that, push that lever down converts into four-wheel drive, sends power to the front. Can't get any simpler than that. That is for fitting the power output, so winch or something at the back, or an overdrive. Overdrive, you're getting a little bit more technical. We'll probably cover that in a later video. First things first, make sure there's no oil in it before I take it apart. So, once you get to know me, you know I like making tools to do make jobs easy. So, gearbox tool. Square drive for the gearbox. Big slotted drive. I don't know what that is, that's about 6mm I think. For um, shaped to fit into the drain plug on the transfer box. So I'll get on with that and then Start disassembling once I make sure it's empty. So after loosening the brake nuts, taking them off, I bag them and write on it. I might be a bit anal, but that's just me. So you start at the back to dismantle. Brake drum needs to come off. So after backing off the adjuster, this needs to come away. Now this has been mated with the output shaft for quite some time doesn't want to move answer to that is you've already cracked this nut take that off and the washer and you bring the brake drum off with 
the output shaft mount as well. To get that to move, the first thing I had to do was pick out the felt seal from inside the, uh, the mount or the hole. And here she comes. Still a bit on the tight side. I think that's the brake still holding it. Even though I back the brakes off all the way. Okay, you can tell I haven't practiced this ahead of time. See if I can free the brakes off any. I'm gonna pull it out of video shot in a minute. Okay, time for a foot as well, I think. It's still on the screen. Yep. Nothing fundamental. I think I need to go inside and investigate what's doing this. I will pause that while I embarrass myself, after I've embarrassed myself. So, it's off, after that made me look foolish. It was just some crud on the end of the shaft that was uh, stopping it rolling. So, once that's off, you can separate the drive member from the brake hub, brake drum, and they'll get boxed up. Then, four bolts, to remove the brake back plate. I might be a bit anal, but I like bagging them and labelling what they are. Back plate. I don't know who goes where when I start putting it back together. Then the plate comes off with some gentle persuasion. Brake back plate, adjuster, there's your lever for pulling the brakes on and off. This is just a simple oil thrower, this comes out. As per all British cars made during the uh, post-war period, they were designed to leak. I like to think of it as active lubrication to prevent rust proof rusting on the chassis if it should leak on the outside of that drive member catches it in the oil catcher dribbles out the bottom of there comes out the back of the back plate and away no oil on the brakes so after that what we need to do is undo the bolts for the Speedo pinion, Speedo cable comes out of there, and remove that, I'll get them loosened off, 
and we'll pick it up when I'm ready to pull that out. Right, so six nuts removed. One of the studs came out with the nut, so it's not a problem. Um, that's the speedo housing with an oil seal. We'll replace the oil seal and put it back together. Oh, lucky, yeah. I've not practiced this either. Now, you can tell that as well that's been standing, there's been some water get in there, so I should think inside the transfer box is going to look very similar, so that'll all get cleaned up, ready for rebuild. On the back of that, there are shims. Keep those together with that because that was very carefully worked out by Land Rover when they put it all together. Calculate the distance that needed to be away from the main box. And that is what drives the Speedo without the crud on it. That just slips on the outside of the output shaft. As it spins, it's picked up by that cog and through the cable up to the dashboard we'll give it its proper name to drive the odometer so we'll take that out remembering that that goes that way round with the protrusion towards the gearbox it acts as a spacer correctly lines it up with the drive cog. Now to separate the transfer box from the gearbox we need to get inside. There's two nuts there holding the gearbox on and uh, from memory serves there's either three or four inside all around the output shaft of the gearbox. So, I need to flip it on its side, take off the base, take off the output shaft bearing, housing, which stops any wobble on that with nothing being connected to it. Inside there, or rolling on there, is a big gear. So you've got the gears there, a cog there, which transfers power from there, through there, down to here. It's a rubbish explanation, but once I've flipped it on its side and took the bottom off, you'll be able to see it as I pull it apart. 